Solomon. Just wanted to say thanks for taking a look at what flow is all about, or as I now call it, the flow leadership framework. In this video, I'll try to keep it short. We're going to look at why use flow and what's in it for you. The flow leadership framework is the missing piece of the puzzle for agile and scaled agile. It's the part that plugs all the management gaps and disconnects that exist in every team level agile and scaling methodology. And it also answers the question as pointed out by one of my clients that this really answers what to do with our line managers, project managers, program managers, product managers, and process managers, and that middle layer of management that agile for decades, at least the purest, they say that it's evil, and that's just simply not true. Right up front, I want to let you know that flow leadership and the flow leadership framework is not a command and control tool. Flow is methodology agnostic, and you can think about it as the glue that holds everything together. <clears throat> as the CEO of one of the product development companies that I've worked with in the past, they said, flow plays nice with everyone, and it will enable you to successfully customize and implement whatever solution you choose. Another uh, director of IT uh, back in the States and a member of Mensa said, I've received over 30 professional certifications in the past 10 years, and this is by far the best training I've ever had. Helpful and immediately applicable. As I mentioned, the flow leadership framework is methodology agnostic. The success rates for team level methods without using flow are not very what shall we say? Hmm. Uh, they're not doing so well. <laughs> if you look at waterfall success rates, um, it was hovering around 14% success back in 2013. Up around 2020, uh, they had improved to 26%, but they achieved that by integrating agile methodologies into the traditional methods. So it's really... I, don't know that we can call traditional methods traditional anymore when they're all moving very quickly to uh, utilize and leverage what Agile delivers. If you look at Scrum and its success, um, it was 39% around 2013, and as of 2020, it was 42%. Dr. Sutherland shared that Agile in general was uh, around 42% already back in 2013. So it's very little movement or very little incremental improvement for agile methods in the last six, seven years. Change management success has always hovered around 30%. And right now, as the scaled agile frameworks and methodologies come into uh, place, did a survey last November where it showed that they're really struggling. 86% uh, were struggling with trying to implement uh, these uh, super huge frameworks. And they were having maybe a, a success rate of around 14%, which is very similar to Waterfall back in 2013. I would believe that we should see some improvements in those numbers as well over time. Flow is looked at through four lenses, four lenses of leadership. Leadership for the individual, leadership for the team, product and product development leadership, and then the organizational leadership. And we have a U here in the middle because this is sort of the path that it, it, it goes for. And so U stands for you as the individual, and it also stands for unified vision framework. Because without a unified vision, which is the first part of the flow formula, it's having a unified vision plus the right people plus the 4D model equals flow or success. We're going to come back to this a little bit later in the presentation. Using the same lenses, it's interesting that Agile primarily focuses on individual team and product. 
and <clears throat> touches somewhat into the organization. If I could have drawn it better, I would have dragged this circle out so that it covered team a little bit better, but oh well, <laughs> limitations of PowerPoint. Flow, on the other hand, focuses on mindset. Remember, Agile is primarily tool sets and methods. So they talk about mindset and they understand if you don't have the right mindset throughout the organization that you're basically going to fail trying to get Agile implemented. Peter Drucker has a great quote. Only three things happen uh, without any effort in an organization. Friction, confusion, and underperformance. Everything else requires le leadership, and leadership is mindset, transformation, or if you don't like the word transformation, use the word transition, that you're going from, some, from something uh, that you're working with to something better. And so this covers all of the different roles uh, from the C-level, portfolio level, uh, to the product program process level, right down to the project line manager, business owner level. It starts to get complicated. And when you look at all of the different uh, puzzle pieces, I call them tiles, uh, sort of like Scrabble. <laughs> and as you're looking at this, uh, there's all these piece, puzzle pieces that you have to uh, take care of at the same time. There's 18 of these, and you need to be active in all 18 areas. And as we're going to see in some of the other pictures, vision is anywhere from half. And if you include strategy, uh, vision and strategy are up to like almost 70% of everything that we do in flow because it's all about leadership. And that's the missing puzzle piece for all agile and or project management methodologies that are out there. And so it's the vision. We have nine of these tiles here. Right people and roles and 4D model are three tiles. And the 4D model is what everything <clears throat> hinges on throughout the whole formula. And if the 4D model's not working, you're not going to deliver. And then when you get to flow, then we're able to measure and show the progress of your transformation as the individuals and teams and products and organization comes up what we call uh, the aha curve. I can never do this right, so hopefully it's something like that. I think we'll do it this way as they come up the curve. But it gets more complicated because you need to do all 18 areas in all four of these lenses. So suddenly you're to 72 uh, areas that you need to be spinning the plates. It's just like the plate spinner at the circus. If you're not able to successfully handle 72 items at once, for whatever you're trying to do, whether it's a rollout, a transformation, or change management, or whatever, if you can't do all of these, it's going to be really tough to succeed. And then it gets even more complicated. Uh, this is a recent picture that I did that's sort of a starburst diagram with leadership at the core and then the VSPT leadership a framework from West Point Military Academy, which is vision, strategy, people, and tasks. Originally in the West Point, they had projects and tactics, but basically the same thing, except I like to work with people because they're core. The individual is core to everything that we do. And then <clears throat> tasks is everything that we got to get done the big pile of work that has to be done. And so what I did here is, is I put all 18 tiles and sort of lined them up with each of the areas that they uh, represent here. But they're in the, um, this is um, in the outer ring that I would call action items or, or things that we have to do and things that we can measure. In the middle here, these are flow focus areas. So it's leadership using the VSPT model, maturity, your mission, one thing purpose, anticipatory vision, values and attitudes, and goals and things like that. <clears throat> Starting over here in strategy, uh, using the 4D model, the 4R model, 
and making sure that you have right people. And so these are the flow focus areas. So that's the next string out after the VSPT. And then the last string out is everything that you got to do. Now, this next slide, it gets even more complicated again because that's 30 that that's that's 30 additional areas that you have to keep track of and if you're doing that in the four uh, lenses that can be up to 120 different plates that you're spinning so this is the flow flywheel of change and the flow flywheel of success or the wheel of fortune if you want to call it that this shows in a very quick way where each of these other methodologies or um, uh, management techniques that we use overlap with flow. All of the items marked with A are either agile or project management methodologies or items that you're going to run into in those methodologies. Everything with an A is going to be agile or project management. When you look at program level, you see a couple of items start to uh, sneak in at the strategy level for program management, agile program management, safe, less, nexus, whatever program level technique that you're using to scale agile. Uh, the, the base Agile methodologies just don't cover that, and that's why things like SAFE have taken the market by storm, because they're trying to plug, plug the gaps that are there. <clears throat> it gets even more complicated as you're, as you're moving up from team to program to portfolio level, and SAFE has a little bit of overlap there, both in the strategy area here and in the... Um, uh, visionary here for values and attitudes. But those are very thin links that those frameworks have to the overall vision. The companies just aren't using that in order to achieve what they want to achieve. And as I mentioned before, friction, confusion, and underperformance. Everything else requires leadership, as Peter Drucker says. Well, the L's are all the leadership items, and you'll notice that, they're, they, that they occur with the people here in the vision area. It even occurs in the strategy area. And so that's why flow plugs all of those additional gaps that exist. So during the last year, uh, myself and a team of 20, 30 people have spent a ton of time honing the flow certification training and have made those available to individuals and organizations. In fact, you can take the FCP, you can do the entire 18 hour course uh, before you even have to pay. If you want to certify, I've separated out the training from the certification. So if you want to certify, you can pay for that after you're done. So try it before you buy. I can guarantee you, you will walk away with some really good new thoughts that you can use, just like the IT director that was the member of Mensa said, you can use it right away, next day in your work, or same day. And so you've got the Flow Certified Professional, Flow Certified Coach, and Flow Certified Trainer, and each of these have a specific um, function for what we're trying to achieve for the organization and in those impact areas that you saw in the circle diagram in the last picture. So think of flow as your umbrella because it's methodology agnostic and it doesn't matter what's hanging off that umbrella, whether it's traditional or agile, scrum, XP, Kanban, uh, lean change management, everything in between, it doesn't matter. Flow is going to take whatever you're doing at these other levels. It's just going to turbocharge it, charge it, and we're going to see that on the next slide. Uh, with traditional, we have routinely seen 38, 39, 40, 41, 42 percent better, uh, or up to those levels of success rate near agile results using traditional for change management. It's 50% to double. 
And for Agile, it's another 50% on top of what they've done. In fact, we had a CIO take uh, Flow and put his teams through the training. He saw in 90 days a 300% increase in the productivity of the teams, and they were already Agile. Let that sink in. And then most importantly, for the leaders and for the executives, this is show me the money, you know? Uh, it, it really comes down to results. How are you going to increase performance? How are you going to increase revenue? How are you going to save us costs? How are you going to eliminate risk or at least mitigate it? And how are you going to help us do the right thing? And so you can look at these numbers on my website. Uh, this one here was this 29.6 million net net was actually audited by a Fortune 500 finance department who came in after we launched the project and they said, okay, how, how much has this project now contributed to the bottom line of the organization? We saved the company 29.6 million net net first year. They used the system for 12 years using uh, declining, double declining uh, digits. Uh, they had come up with that it was somewhere almost $59 million over the lifetime of that use for that CRM system that they saved. That's what gets executives' attention. That's what Flow is all about. It's about delivering remarkable results where people just stand back and go, wow, how'd you do that? And so, but what's great about this is this is all teams. This is team value add. These are teams we led. We taught them flow. They either knew some kind of project management or agile. But this is 26 years of tracking. We've had a lot of companies who have audited these results. And uh, we've, we routinely see 300 to 900% higher levels of performance by the teams even if they're already doing Agile, it doesn't matter. And if they've never done Agile, it doesn't matter. We're going to help them achieve much higher levels of performance. So uh, in the last 26 years, we've saved $136 million on cost savings. We've increased revenue for over $86 million for these org organizations. Just using those two as the measures We've we've easily, and these are very conservative numbers, we've easily added well over $220 million in value add. And the teams that did it, they, they were just, it was amazing. These were just ordinary teams. These weren't quote-unquote superstars, but they did it. And that's what really makes this so amazing. So we, we should chat. Let's chat. And we've been eliminating friction since 95. Uh, We've got a ton of training out there. I've actually got about 100, over 190 videos on uh, YouTube with all of the flow training, but don't get intimidated. It's actually uh, broken up into the three levels, just like we saw on the other slide. So reach out to me. My, web, my website is there. Uh, my contact information is there. And let's get the conversation flowing. Thank you very much.